Session one, part three, we're going to look at backflow and backflow prevention in this section. So at the end of this part of the session, I want you all to be able to explain what is meant by backflow, including why it's important to prevent it. Describe the levels of health risk from each of the categories of water. And list the minimum levels of backflow requirement for each category. So firstly, what is backflow? Backflow is essentially when water flows the opposite way than, than it's designed to in the pipes. It can be caused by two different phenomena, back pressure and back siphonage. Example on the left here shows back siphonage. And we'll chat that through in a little bit more detail in a second. So back pressure is when if there's pressure in one part of the system is higher than another, it can force water back the opposite way than it's been designed. For example, um, a good example would be an unvented hot water cylinder um, being fed from the mains. It doesn't have a check valve on it. When that water heats up and expands, uh, it can cause water to be forced backwards in, in the pipework. So we should make sure we put a check valve on the, on the cold supply to uh, an invented cylinder. Another example is back siphonage. Back siphonage is, is probably the main issue. It can be caused by uh, a drop in pressure um, downstream, which could, which could be caused, for example, by a leak, which could then cause water to be drawn back into the system because of negative pressure and uh, end up with contaminated water being pulled into the mains and, and causing a, a risk to health. The example we've got shown here, mains turned off to work on a leak. The water's flowing out through that leak, which means the water is there's negative pressure being generated, which can then pull contaminated water into the pipework and contaminate the supply and we're going to look at how we can prevent that from happening but firstly we're going to look at what the categories of water are the categories of risk right so depending on what the water contains it's categorized from one to five essentially one is cold fresh clean drinking water three to five, which is like potentially lethal if you drunk it, essentially. Um, so the bigger the number, the higher the risk to health. Generally, we, we apply these levels of risk to the water in the appliances. So water in our heating system, in a boiler, for example, water in a bath, water in a basin, water in a system or a kitchen sink. Um, Okay, so fluid category one is our, like I've just said, so cold, fresh, clean water poses no risk to health. This is the this is the water which will be flowing out of a cold tap as it comes from the mains. Okay, some people describe it as wholesome water. They used to describe it in the old bylaws as potable water. Okay, but this is this is our the best water we can get straight from the mains. Wholesome water. According to the water eggs, should ideally be kept cooler than 20 degrees C, but should absolutely never exceed 25 degrees C. So back for prevention for fluid category one. Well, it's a cold, fresh, clean water which has come from the mains. It's a, we don't need any back for prevention. It's fine, and um, just the way it is. Okay, so if that water flowed backwards in the main, it's not a problem. So we don't need any backflow prevention for fluid category one. Fluid category two. This is water which has had a slight change. They describe it uh, in the regulations as an aesthetic change. It might be something that's caused a change in its taste, odour or appearance. For example, if you got a cup of water from the mains, you put a little bit of juice in it. Um, you'd have then changed it from the way it's come in from the mains. It's still fine to, to drink. Um, but its aesthetic quality will, will have changed. It would have changed colour, it would have changed taste, it would have changed smell as well, you know. Um, so 
flu category two isn't really a risk to health, but because it's changed from the way it's come in from the mains, you have to put and make sure you put back flu prevention in in place. Okay. Uh, another example, you're changing its temperature. So if you put that into, if you put cold water from the mains into a hot water cylinder or into a kettle, you heat it up. It's now changed from the way it came in from the mains. It's passed over that sort of 25 degree threshold and it's no longer considered fluid category one. Even though technically you could drink it, obviously people drink boiled water with great regularity. Um, there's no harm there, but it's changed from the way it came in from the mains. So we need to make sure that we prevent it from flowing, uh, from backflow from occurring. Okay. So any water that's been heated would be a minimum of a category two. For example, water in a hot water cylinder, water from a hot tap, or also softened water as well. If water is softened, it's changed from the way it's come in from the mains and, and would be considered as water category two. Okay. Um, backflow prevention for fluid category two, um, you should use, make sure you use a single check valve, at least a single check valve um, to prevent that water flowing back. It's not really a hazard, uh, but it's changed from the way it's came in from the mains, so therefore we need to prevent it from flowing back into the mains. Okay, and you can do that mechanically with a, a, a single check valve. So anywhere where you have hot and cold water mixing, uh, like at a mixer tap, at a shower, as an absolute minimum, you should fit a single check valve. On, on the on the cold and if there's a if there's an imbalance in pressures you should put it on the hot and the cold. Okay. Fluid category three. This contains any water that might be considered a slight health hazard. Um, interestingly the water once the water hits the a bath or a shower tray or a basin, these would all be considered that fluid would then be considered a category three risk fluid, it would be considered to be fluid category three. Very, very interesting um, addition to this is actually um, a WC system, water in a WC system, in a toilet system, is only considered to be a category three risk because it's not yet kind of went into the pan, which obviously is, is going to change its, its category of risk. Okay, so in a WC system, it's only category three, but in a WC pan, we'll find out it's category five risk. So um, backflow prevention for fluid category three, because it's, it's considered to be a slight health hazard fluid category three, um, so we, would, we could either use an AUK2 air gap, which is an air gap between the spillover level of the appliance and the outlet, or a double check valve. Okay, double check valves are a little bit more comprehensive than a single check valve. Single check valve's got one valve orifice, one spring, um, whereas a double check valve has got two. Okay, AUK2 air gap, look, look at it very briefly. Um, essentially, the, the height of the gap, the height between the spillover level of the appliance and the outlet of the tap uh, should vary, or will vary, uh, depending on the size of the inlet to the tap. So if you had a half inch inlet, which is basically a 15 mil pipe um, going into it, then the gap should be at least 20 mil between the spillover level of the appliance and the outlet of the tap. If you had a three quarter inch connection, for example, on the bath uh, with a 22 mil pipe going into it, the size of the gap should be at least 25 mil between the spillover level of the appliance and the outlet of the tap. Okay. Um, always, always, always it recommends in the water rigs, wherever possible, to try and make sure that you use a non-mechanical means of backflow prevention, which would mean an air gap. That's much but preferable because air gaps can't really go wrong. You know, uh, mechanical things can can fail. Okay. Um, but where you can achieve this, for example, like you see in this picture here where the bath uh, taps are discharging inside the bath, below the spillover level of the bath, we can't get an air gap there. So what we need to do is we need to make sure that we use an appropriate backflow prevention method, in this case a double check valve, 
on both the hot and the cold to prevent any of that bath water, that category three uh, bath water being drawn back into the pipe. Okay. Um, but yeah, you see in this picture here with the with the shower head, um, there are various methods that we can can use to make to make sure we get an air gap. If we have uh, a shower um, in a bath, for example, we could use a shorter hose or we could use a, a retaining clip, which you're going to look at just here to give us an appropriate air gap. OK, ah, another place that we should always make sure we use a double check valve is at an outside tap, a hose union bib tap. Guilds love to ask that, so just worth noticing, noting that the now. OK, um, you can actually see in this picture here the reason for that because on a hose union tap, obviously we're going to connect hoses and that hose will make sure that we don't have an air gap because that, that hose could literally be drip, dripping in a puddle, you know. Um, <clears throat> so as a result, we need to make sure whenever we, we fit a hose union tap, we must make sure that we use a double check valve alongside it. OK, uh, if we look at fluid category four, and um, this contains water that would be considered to be a significant health hazard. Uh, water in swimming pools would be considered as category four. Um, water in commercial heating systems is considered as category four in commercial washing machines uh, and uh, would be cat four as well. Interestingly, sort of domestic heating systems, domestic washing machines are only considered as a cat three risk, but commercial heating systems, commercial washing machines are considered as a category four risk. OK, um, so backflow prevention for fluid category four. Well, it's a significant health hazard. Um, so therefore, the only thing that we can use to protect uh, ourselves from it mechanically would be a reduced pressure zone valve or a non-mechanical means would be an AUK3 air gap. Uh, ideally, obviously, you prefer in the air gap wherever possible. Interesting fact, RPZ valves are the only backflow prevention devices that actually need a drain pipe. Um, the way they work is just like a double check valve in terms of the two valve orifices and and whatnot, but um, which sort of will prevent the water from flowing back the way. But it also has a reduced pressure zone in between them with a, a valve that will open and allow any water to, to drain out. Um, should the pressure drop in the system, for example, through as a result of back siphonage. OK, fluid category five, this is the, the most dangerous um, water, essentially. It represents a serious health hazard. If you ingested the water, you'd be at risk of serious illness or death. I mean, you can see, for example, uh, a risk here with the bath, with a, with a long um, shower hose on it, the shower hose could fall into the, a bidet, which is considered a category five risk. And um, that's where people wash the bum after going to the toilet or a toilet again, which is considered the bowl of the toilet is considered a category five risk. OK, uh, and another sort of key fact worth noting, kitchen sinks are also considered to be a category five risk. And the main reason for that is, that, like you can see in the picture, is the, the, we use them often for preparing butchery materials. There potentially could be pathogens in your kitchen sink from sort of the, the sort of leftover chicken sort of juice you, you poured in there after defrosting some chicken or, or, or whatever from the freezer. So kitchen sinks are considered a category five risk alongside the bowl of the toilet B days, urinals, um, things like that. So fluid category five is a serious health hazard. You must not drink any water that's touched the bowl of a kitchen sink or any of the other appliances that we've talked about. OK, backflow prevention for cat five. Um, it's a serious health hazard, so we should only really use an appropriate air gap. There are some things called pipe interrupters, but we don't need to really worry about those. You can only use them in very particular circumstances. So generally speaking, we should make sure that we'd use a, an AUK3 air gap. 
um, at, at taps uh, or other appliances. Interestingly, um, an AUK one air gap also protects up to Cat5, and that's what you'd actually find on our <clears throat> between our WC system and a WC bowl. There's always just a little lip um, which which sort of kicks up, which means that the, the, the system is actually held at least 15 mil above the above the bowl essentially so there's no chance of any of the water from the bowl getting back into the system and that's why the system is only considered the cat three risk whereas the bowl is considered the cat five risk um, and there's also backflow prevention um, various types of, of backflow pre prevention in systems um, which which can give appropriate backflow prevention okay so in the areas where a hose could fall into an appliance that's likely to contain Category 5 water, you must take appropriate precautions, for example, using the hose retaining ring or shorten the hose so it can't fall into the appliance. Worth noting, if you've got an ascending spray bidet or, uh, or any sort of bidet with, with a flexible hose, you must not feed that appliance from the mains you can feed it from storage as long as it's the only appliance fed from that run, which means that there's no chance of, of water being sucked back into the um, into the, the system essentially. Okay, so ascending spray bidets you need to be especially careful of with hot and cold water systems. Um, so or be these with flexible hose that's okay. Okay, so now it is time for your task. <clears throat>